Greetings. It's Thursday, 4.15 in the afternoon. Long day for me. Uh, Thursday the 30th of July. Um, last night I had a, um, a long conversation with Jonathan Pickup from Arkencad, um, Re um, a conversation I had seen on the, um, the Nemechek Vectorworks board where you see a lot of questions and answers on just general points of using Vectorworks. And one of them was the use of dimensions and text within the viewport. Now I have always thought you don't do it, um, except for certain things like titles and stuff like that, which is what I do. And I happened to be talking to John and I said, what about this? And he said, well, there are lots of reasons why it can be done either way. And he went through it and he opened up a port on his uh, go to meeting and went through it for me. So um, I videoed it on the machine and um, here, have a look at it. A um, couple of other things as well. He was showing me some um, techniques that he's been doing with um, a curved wall with a very profile top to it. And I think he's actually put this one out so um, on uh, YouTube. So have a look at it and um, enjoy. Wow. Someone asked me to do this today. Now, what the um, problem, Stephen, was that uh, we've got this shape here. Yeah. Down the bottom. And they wanted that shape, which is easy to draw in front elevation, but they actually wanted it wrapped around a curving wall. Oh, wow. So you can see I managed to do it. Yeah. And the way I did it was I made a whole bunch of... Um, I made a whole bunch of little lines that followed that curve in plan view, and I lifted each one to different heights in 3D. Ah, okay. And I used my loft surface to give myself a, a lofting that curved in three, curved in plan, yeah. and went up and down in elevation. Excellent. And then I just used the shell solid on it to um, make it wider. Yeah. But I thought well, this was a really neat trick. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Yeah, and dropped it down to the right level. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, I just extruded that nerves curve right up to hit the underside of that flowing thing. Yeah. Oh, that would be really good to do. And I thought that was really cool. Now, this is using some of the tricks that are out of my 3D modeling manual, the one that's just been announced. Okay. So, so people look at that manual and they go, okay, well, you know, it's all very well. Jonathan ex has explained all this stuff in simple terms. Mm. But then you get this problem and you go, boom, there it is. And it uses all the things that I've covered in my manual. I just thought it was brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. And that's in 2009. And before. I actually think you can go back earlier than that. I think some of these tools, the loft surface tool, the shell solid tool, I think they go back way beyond Vectorx 2008. I'm sure you can do them in 11 and 12, and I think it might even, some of these tools even go back as early as Vectorworks 9 to do some of this stuff. The problem has been, Steve, that there's never been a way of unlocking the power of these tools, which is, you know, I'm pretty happy because I've written a manual and, and using the techniques in the manual is what I, exactly what I use to generate this thing. Yeah. But the, um, the person I did this for, unbelievable. They're absolutely blown away that you could do that. Oh, absolutely. I can see why. Yeah. Hey, just going away from that a little bit, that conversation that Grant Gormley had on the um, the Nemechek um, uh, site regarding dimensioning within viewports, you were talking about it last night. I, I was. I need to open up a file to talk to you about it. Okay. Hold on, just let me open up a file. Last night we were talking about this kind of project where you've got... Um, a, a, a lot of information, should you put this information on the design layer, should you put it in the annotations part of the viewport. And I don't really see any magic golden rule that's, that suits every situation. There are a lot of situations where one method works and there are a lot of situations where a different method works. Now I've been, I've been a bit terrible with this particular project because I don't know if you can see, but all my notes are highlighted in blue because they are inside the viewport annotation. Okay. But all of my dimensions are actually back on the design layer. 
And what happened was I, I was at this uh, viewport at this point and I wanted to put a couple of notes on and I ended up sticking one note after the other until I had them all on. Now, I could easily have put all these notes back on the design layer and so there's this problem in your mind, where's the best place to do it? Now for some situations, like if it's a work group reference situation, putting all the annotations in the viewport might be the best method. Now, I should really put all of these notes on the design layer and, uh, you know, I, I'm sort of embarrassed that I'm a bit sloppy and sometimes I do it one way and sometimes the other. But I guess that's really the, a symptom of the, of the fact that there's not one magic way to do it. Now, there are times where you have to put your notes inside the annotation. Let's just, let's have a look at a general plan. Yeah. So this is my general plan. So this is at 1 to 50 and it shows the uh, the proposed kitchen and the renovations to all the other rooms. Now, this one could easily have had all of the notes on the design layer and I think mostly all of them are except for one. You can see the notes that are inside the viewport annotation highlighted in blue. Yeah. Now I've got a blow up here of the bathroom area. Now in this situation I've cropped very tight to just the bathroom walls. Now if I put my notes for this bathroom on the design layer, you they will it. not appear yeah. here because I will have cropped them out. So in this situation you have to put the dimensions, the notes, the call outs and all that kind of stuff inside the annotation part of the viewport. You can't do it on the design layer because as soon as you put the crop in, you've cropped them out and if you make the crop bigger then you're not just seeing the bathroom you're seeing all the other stuff as well correct so how do you do it is it just 2009 that's uh, got this facility now no it's uh, this goes back to vector x11 oh does it this ability to put the well you can put all the notes inside the annotation in the annotation part of the viewport all the way back to vector x11 What's changed in Vectorx 2009 is that it, dimensions can be associative, but um, you know maybe for this situation it's not that important. And and really, you know if you haven't got 2009, you can't create associative dimensions inside a viewport anyway. But let's not worry about that part. Let's just talk about the basic principles of should you put the notes on the design layer or in the viewport. And I'm afraid the answer has to be before I can give you an answer about where should you do it, I have to ask you, what are you trying to achieve? Yeah, and you can do either, depending on the situation. But depending on the situation. Now, there are some areas where you absolutely have to do it on the design, on the annotation part of the viewport, and that's any three-dimensional stuff. So if you've got a window schedule, or you've got elevations, or you've got sections, you have to put those dimensions in the annotation part of the viewport. Yeah. They will not show up any other way.